Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be doing another instalment of the heat engine. So this will be the second video in the series and we're going to focus on the fuel tank. So just to clear one or two things up that I missed off on the introductory video on part one last week. The first thing, <laughs> I'm probably pronouncing Jan's name wrong, I think I pronounced it Jan so apologies for that, it's clearly Jan. And secondly, what I didn't, I, I, I alluded to the fact that Jan designed this for his eldest son, I think, probably when he was a child. I'm not really sure too much on the history, but um, so Jan designed this engine for his, uh, for his eldest son and actually named the engine after him. And that was, I never made any reference to the, to the word, I, I guess it's pronounced Mark or it could be Mars. I'm not really sure on the pronunciation of that, but. So the engine's actually named after Jan's eldest son, so just clear that up as well, so that, that gives some reference to what the name is there. So without further babbling, just very quickly running through, the fuel tank is made of four separate parts. They're all brass and it's a soldered construction once it's complete. So I'll take you to the command and control center, always makes me smile, and we'll have a quick look at the 3D diagrams of that rather than me trying to recreate that on the board and then we'll crack on with the manufacture. Okay guys you can see the fuel tank here so we've got some brass tubing we've got a lid made from brass solid we've got a pipe that goes through that that holds the wick again made from brass tubing and then we've got the base piece and I know I said four pieces is actually five there's a threaded piece that goes through the bottom part of the tank to actually hold the tank in place onto the support bracket. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. I've got my materials here. I'll just scroll up by the power of magic. There we go. So you can get to see this from a side view. So you can see there the, the fixing bolt that comes through underneath and, and that see where that gets held on this bracket. Now I'm probably going to change the design of this bracket. It doesn't change the design of the tank but I'm probably going to make this a slotted bracket as opposed to just a hole in it so that I've got some lateral movement this way to help adjust the flame as it plays over the valve opening in the cylinder. So when we get onto that part, we'll probably make that small change. All right guys, we've got our bit of brass tubing. So this is 32 mil, I think, OD, 31.7, I think it's an imperial size. And it's about a 1.6mm wall thickness from memory when I ordered it, that looks about right. So what we're going to do now is load this up in the 3 jaw. That should do. Now obviously I need to be careful with this, I can't, I can't nip down on this too tightly because I'll distort the tube so it needs to be tight enough to hold it but not tight enough to distort it. So I'll reposition the camera and we'll start just going to clean one end up, light chamfer, deburr in the bore and then we'll come in with the parting tool and part this off after we've given this OD a bit of a polish.
There we go guys, nice and easy that one. Probably the easiest bit to make on the whole engine. So that's got the tube bit done. You'll see that when I parted that off there, I've got a bit of small diameter. This is just brass tubing, it's an old from donkeys years ago. Ideal for sticking up the, the bore or something when you're parting it off, especially when you've got a decent surface that you don't want to get damaged if it starts flying around. Much safer than trying to catch parts with your fingers. So just a tip. So we'll move on now, we'll get the, the solid piece of brass loaded up in the in the chuck for machining the, the two end caps. Alright guys, next job I'm going to do the bit of tubing that goes through the lid of the tank to hold the wick for the burner. I've got this bit of tubing, it's very very close to the size I want but it's a bit big on the OD and it's a bit too thick wall thickness so we need to put a drill down the inside just to open that out and it's about 20 millimeters long it finishes up so we're just going to set that up now turn the lathe on now I'm going to get soaked because I've just had my chuck apart cleaned all the scroll cleaned the jaws and given it an oil so it's going to be spraying oil everywhere when I start this up now right I'll reposition the camera we're going to face off turn the OD stick a drill or something up the bore and then I'm probably just going to hacksaw this off rather than trying to part it off we'll just hacksaw it off for what it is flip it round face other end Job done. Right, we're just going to try and clean this other end up. I've got the lightest grip, really, really light grip, so I'm just going to tickle it. Hopefully that will just be enough to clean it up. There we go, that's got our second piece of the fuel tank made. So that's the pipe for the... Is that going to focus? There we go. So that's got the pipe made for the, for the wick to go through into the, into the fuel tank. So we'll move now onto the top and bottom cap. Okay, so we've got our next bit of brass up. So we're now going to start turning the top cap. So basically face off, I've got a bit to skim off the OD and then I am recessing the middle part down to a flat bottom to centre to fit on top of the on top of the brass tube that you've seen me make already.
Alright guys, I'm going to see if I can get away with this boring bar before I start setting up bits of high speed steel. So I'm not sure how much of this you can and can't see, but we'll just have a go at this. So I'm basically going to be plunging in bit by bit with the boring bar until I've got enough space to be able to get in the middle, enough clearance on the boring bar, and then we'll try and bore this to finish size. Should perfect. We'll just deep burn that and then part that off. a bit quicker than that.
I was trying to avoid that flying off. There we go. Right, we'll take the slug out of the chuck, turn it round, clean the back up on there, and then break edge it. Yep, that's still warm. Bring you back in a minute. There we go guys, that's got our top cap almost done. Last operation on there is to drill a, a hole through that at 45 degrees, which is going to be interesting. So I'll leave that till later. Next job is to make another one of these now, almost identical, but just slightly thinner. So this is for the top, the other one is, is slightly thinner, and that's for the bottom. So I'll do that off camera because it's the same as this, and I'll bring you back once we've got both of those done and we're ready to put the hole through at 45 degrees in the lid for the the brass tube you saw me make earlier that holds the wick. Alright guys this is my solution to the 45 degree hole problem whether it's going to work or not I don't know I think it should be okay so I've pinched two of my small clamps that I made for the rotary table I've got this bit of old aluminium plate don't know what it was it's got loads of other holes in already drilled and tapped two M6 holes roughly in the right places where I think I'm going to have enough clearance to get an 8mm, I don't think I've got a 9mm, I need a 9mm hole in here so I think I'm going to go for an 8mm slot drill which is what I've got I can plunge in go all the way through and then I can come out in the X axis by a quarter of a mil each side and the Y axis by a quarter of a mil each side which will give me a a lobed hole for want of a better word and then the little bits in between I'll clean up with a file with a little needle file or a rat tail file just till the pipe fits through so that's my solution I don't have a 9 mil. obviously can't drill through an angle like this so that's really the only solution that I've got but I've just used my 45 degree setup piece underneath set the plate up 45 degrees so I know my angle's correct I've marked out my centre of my hole from the drawing so what we're going to do is put the wobble bar on with the pointer on it steady the pointer up and we're going to set the pointer over that centre point and then we'll lock the axis off take the chuck out put the put the collet chuck in put our 8mm slot drill in and see what happens That's pretty close. It's stopping exactly where I thought it would, which is where, because I've opened up in Y and X both sides to 9mm. 
and the rest of it's at 8 so there'll be two bumps in there that just need a bit of light hand work with the file rather than me risk going off piste with the melon machine and guessing I'm going to call that good we'll take it off at this setup and we'll do a bit of hand work in the vise to get this pipe properly fitting through that hole There we go guys, quick bit of filing, job done, so that's ready for soldering now, all I'm going to do is just quickly, I'll not do it in the vise, or not at this angle, just break the edge around the outside, take the burrs off, and then that's ready for soldering. Right guys, I've just knocked this up quick, I didn't film it, dead simple, out of a bit, an old bar under brass. Turn that down, just a quick clean up on the OD from the brass and then measured the thread OD, put a die down it. I've relieved the bottom with an undercut and what that's for, and this is where I'm straying away from the plans on the model slightly. This is the bottom of the fuel tank and basically I've made this up to go into there and this is going to get soldered into position. And it's all soldered together and that will go flush up to the bottom face there and then that thread at the bottom will go into the slightly modified support that I'm going to make which is slotted which then allows me to move this thing forward and backwards in or out of the cylinder rather than this just going straight through a hole so that's my solution slightly different from the drawings so that's what we're going to do and I think I'll get a good solder ring underneath there and through the threads when I'm soldering in the tube in the bottom here which we'll be doing next alright then guys it's time for some experimentation so I'm planning on using my plumbing gear for this this has to be soft soldered well according to the drawings it's not hard soldered so what I'm going to do is flux up just the areas as best I can that I want the solder so one thing I've learnt from years of soft soldering wet work plumbing copper pipes that kind of thing is wherever you put flux that's where your solder is going to run so I'm trying to keep like this particular one here I'm trying to keep the flux off the threads where I don't need it. I don't know whether it's going to work or not but we'll we'll give it a go and see what happens. So that's nice and tight in there. Alright guys, that seems to have been fairly successful. I've checked it with some methylated spirits just in the shallow dish at the bottom and nothing leaking down the thread. So we've cleaned everything up and I've zoomed you in a bit closer and we'll see, if, see how we get on with this. I'm going to go a bit steady with the heat on this one. Just gently, gently and Try and get the heat to soak in from the tube down into the base. Because obviously I don't want to um, really I don't want to remelt the solder that I've already just done on that screw thread at the bottom.
know whether you saw that run around, I think you would have done. Looks like it's caught, so we'll just leave that to cool down and then we'll check it again. I'll bring you back. Right then guys, last one. Not sure what we can do with this one. good. I'll let all these cool down, we'll give them a bit of a clean up and then I'm not doing the full clean up and polish just now, we'll do that later but we'll clean it up to get the flux off because we're going to leave this probably stood for a while while we make the other bits of the engine. So I'll just give them a quick clean up, get rid of the flux and then I'll bring you back and we'll f finish this video off. Alright guys we're just doing a leak test so we've got that full of maths that's been like that for a couple of minutes and nothing coming out the joint at the bottom and nothing coming out down the thread so happy that that's going to serve its purpose so that just needs a bit of clean up so that's all good so I'll bring you back in a moment when we're wrapping the episode up well there we go guys that's the end of the fuel tank build for now so we've got our fuel tank completed, let's get off my perch and bring it into the camera. So there you go, not the best soldering job, I've used too much solder, that's clear. That's me thinking this is a plumbing joint probably and feeding too much in, but it's certainly not going to leak. <laughs> so. That's it, all soldered at the bottom, all fluid tight, and then the top lifts off to fill as per the plan. So that's how it's planned to be. So next job on that is to do some cleanup. I've done some rudimentary cleanup, got rid of all the flux, so it's had a good wipe down. So that's good to sit now until I've decided how I'm going to attack. It's not too bad. The solder around the the solder around the spout's not too bad at all but the solder on this bottom joint here you can see there's a little bit too much gone in there if I'm honest so I've got a bit of a bit of work to do just to clean that up I'm not quite sure how I do that yet might even try putting it back in the lathe or something and just see if I can turn that off or either that or some very delicate work with a file one or the other we'll, we'll figure that out but you guys don't need to watch me do that that's just a bit of clean up but pleased with that, that's the first time I've made anything like that. So that's another part of the engine done, which I'm pleased about. So we'll call that a wrap. So thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing even. Thank you to the new subscribers that have come along. And hopefully there'll be a few more because it seems to be appealing to, I guess, a more broader audience than the work that I've typically been doing which is good and if anybody's got any hints and tips I'm <laughs> gladly accepted you know like I said this is my first go at this so I'm on a bit of a learning curve with some of the you know, that's the first time I've ever soft soldered anything other than a copper pipe on a plumbing system so it's all a learning curve we'll get there so we'll catch you all very very soon on another video when we'll be making something else Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be doing another
That was shit. <laughs> right guys, I'm just straying away from the plans again. So I've just knocked this up quick. And I've just dropped it on the floor, because I'm a bellend.